So, Jim, what did you think of Psycho? Uh, it's a great movie. I mean, you know, as we said at the beginning, it's a, it's a true classic. It's a it's a cinematic masterpiece from one of the greatest person p- people to ever wield a camera. The thing I think it suffers from is once you've seen it once or twice. I mean, it, like it, it's still an exciting movie to watch, but once you've seen it once or twice, you know what's coming. You know, if I could somehow that's true watch. of any movie though yeah well except, uh, except like i love re-watching a movie like hot fuzz let's say and that's one of my absolute okay. favorite movies to re-watch i could do it time and time again stuff like lord of the rings stuff like that but psycho the big draw for psycho is the twist the shower scene yeah i understand but i also think you know a great twist ending the best twist endings a la the sixth sense or whatever they make you want to re-watch the movie and i think I think that's what Psycho does. If if we look at the twist as in not just that Janet Lee gets killed, but the twist as in Norman has a split personality and is acting as his mother when he kills people, which that's really the twist because we, we the entire movie are led to believe that he and his mother are different people. Mm-hmm. You, you know? So if that if you view that as the twist, then that makes the conversation scenes, all all of his like little lines and kind of subtle hints at it all the more thrilling all the more rewarding i think so i i think that twist makes me want to keep watching the movie i understand the janet lee thing that, which to be perfectly honest i knew about the shower scene before i ever saw the movie psycho is one of the movies psycho is above all other movies the movie that i would have loved to see knowing absolutely nothing about it you know but i knew about yeah. the shower scene i even knew it was chocolate syrup and you know that they use for blood and, you know i i wish because because you are so into that forty thousand dollars thing and and then just the movie takes a harsh left turn and then the money just isn't important anymore and i wish i could have seen that truly been engrossed by that story and then had the rug pulled out from under me it's like audition you know Mm -hmm. a little bit i mean it's not as extreme as audition it's kind (laughs) of like that well yeah and i mean and you know at the end of the day it my complaint there or my wish to have to be able to watch psycho with fresh eyes every time is a minor complaint because i don't have any complaints about the movie even some of the acting like you know it it might not be as good as most of the other actors like uh christ what's what's the fellow's name sam's uh the the john gavin yeah i mean he's not super great but he's definitely the worst yeah, but you forgive him and and any other like fault that an actor has just because how great the rest of the movie is. Yeah, and even the even the acting, I think this is a very well acted movie. I think Anthony Perkins is just perfect as Norman Bates, just absolutely just spot on. You know, I couldn't imagine it being done better. But I but this past time rewatching it, I did notice that he he seems to be an actor that plays off of who he's acting with. Because his mm-hmm. scenes with John Gavin are not nearly as good as his scenes with Martin Balsam, and especially the scene with Janet Lee, which is, you know, the shower scene's a classic. That conversation in the parlor is my favorite scene. He is so good. And in there you could say Janet Lee's playing off of him, too, because she has the, you know, the facial reactions to his weirdness and everything. But I love how natural he is, natural and awkward, and he is with um, Martin Balsam, where at that point you know he's hiding something, but he's still playing <laughs> yeah. it as cool as he can. And then the scenes the scenes with um, John Gavin, which it's just a couple of them and they're not too long, are just not as good. And, and some of that maybe J- John Gavin kind of sucks, but yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I definitely agree with you. And Anthony Perkins is such, when you're done watching the movie, you almost want to see just more shots of him. You know, just more stuff. I don't know. I just wish there was more stuff from that movie. It Now, it's also funny that they waited till after Hitchcock died to start making sequels, I guess. <laughs> I mean, that's not a coincidence. No, that absolutely can't be a not. a coincidence. <laughs> absolutely not. Well, that, that was also like, it, that was Universal in the 80s. Joe Bob Briggs has talked about this, where Universal felt like they, because this, this movie is a Paramount release, but any DVD release or whatever, I watched this movie on Apple Movies or iTunes, whatever the hell it's called now, and um, it has the Universal logo, and then the credits kick in, and it says, Par- oh, like a Paramount release or whatever, and it's just, I th- like, Paramount or Universal just, like, bought the rights to, like, everything Hitchcock a long time ago, maybe, probably after he died. Universal, in the 80s, felt like they, they were kind of jealous, because they see all these, like, independent producers and you know nightmare on elm street is new line and they're having success with with you know 
this with Freddy and then Paramount with Friday the 13th and all these other like nobody studios and Universal's like well we invented horror and we don't have shit to show for it in there <laughs> so they just like started buying up sequel rights to like everything like the fan the first couple Phantasm sequels are Universal produced and the, obviously the original Phantasm is very very independent and that's when they <laughs> That might even be when they bought Psycho, but I, I don't think I think they probably already had the rights to Hitchcock's movies before that. But I just love that kind of fascinating little period in history where Universal was just like, shit, shit, shit. We need a big horror movie. What, <laughs> what do we do? And it's like, yeah, it's Psycho too. Why not? Uh, yeah. But yeah, I love Hitchcock. Like I said, Psycho is not quite my favorite movie by him. It's it's definitely not the best. Vertigo is very clearly his best movie. Vertigo is better than almost every movie ever. Yeah, well, I was going to ask you that actually because I. But Psycho is ever... kind of the sentimental favorite because it was the first one I saw. I grew up with it. It was one of the early horror movies I saw that I would have gotten into. You know, I saw it as a kid, probably seven or eight. Loved it. Wow. Well, it's funny because I've I've only seen six Hitchcock movies. Uh, Vertigo is definitely one of them, and Vertigo is my favorite of the ones I've seen. But I've seen. I've seen more films by Hitchcock than any other director. I've seen probably about 30 or so, which is oh, probably yeah, like I'll half just... his movies. He did a bunch of silent movies that I've never seen. Yeah, I think he no. did 50 or 60 movies. Yeah, probably at least. I recently watched, and by recently I mean last year, Notorious, and I really enjoyed that's, it. That's the Biggie Smalls biopic that Hitchcock yeah. did? <laughs> You're such an asshole. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. No, yeah, it's the Duran Duran music video. But anyway, I like I liked Claude Rains in it. Yeah, Notorious is great. It's um probably not quite in my top ten Hitchcock movies. But, you know, I love uh Vertigo North by Northwest, Rear Window, Strangers on a Train is one of the best plots ever for a movie, I think, and that movie's freaking hilarious too. So many great ones. Psychos it's it's a strong contender. It's probably his second best film. It's probably barely my second favorite movie by his. It's almost first. But yeah, it's a great movie. It's a masterpiece. There's that, again, that 20, 25-minute stretch of um, Norman and Marion meeting through Norman burying Marion's body in the swamp. That stretch (laughs) there. That is the best 20, 25 minutes I've ever seen on film consecutively. And then it's kind of like everything after that isn't as good. The movie takes a bit of a dip after that. Yeah. And then the movie takes an even bigger dip, I think, after Arbogast is killed, because then we're dealing with John Gavin, Vera Miles, and like, yeah, Vera Miles is fine, but John Gavin just kind of sucks. And that's, you know, that's, that's my <laughs> complaint agree. there. I agree. 